Racing takes place out at Hollywood Bets Killingworth on Saturday, the 20th of April, 2024. We've got a 10 race program for you with race number one set to get underway at 20 past 12. And it is a maiden juvenile plate over the 1000 meter trip that will get proceedings underway. Joining me on the line is Graham Hawkins. And Graham, how are you doing? All good, thank you. I'm actually recording this show from Johannesburg. We had a terrific first day to the National Yelling Sales. Uh, six million rand, the top price uh, that Colt sold to the Hong Kong Jockey Club, but there was plenty of action throughout the day. A beautiful day in Johannesburg. Going to be a very warm uh, weekend in Johannesburg. And talking about Cape Town, no signs of any rain yet, so the conditions will be perfect for racing. It's nice and cool on Saturday, around 20, 21 degrees, but no rain. And uh, yeah, as I said, uh, conditions perfect for racing. Well, let's get into race number one, where we've got uh, Kai Boy, who is your favorite, K-Boy. Kai Boy at uh, even money. It's 5-1 to one about powering the glory worldly at 11-2. to two. Krim is at 8-1, to one, and then it's 12-1 to one and better bar those. Now, number 14 from the Candace Bass Robinson Yard, he obviously sets the standard. He, he met uh, Lion Rampart, who was just a superior on the day. But I thought he ran uh, quite a nice race, and he looks to be set to uh, get the job done here. But there are some nicely bred first-timers. Yes, uh, Rahil, on face value, one really can't oppose number 14, Kai Boy. Yes, he was receiving three kilograms from Lion Rampart on debut, but Lion Rampart was much more experienced, and I was impressed by the way he chased Lion Rampart all the way to the line, and the third-place runner was eight lengths behind, and the third-place runner, all his green, was actually a winner already. So a very impressive debut from number 14, Kai Boy, and it's very difficult to oppose him. Worldly, uh, also by One World, as is Kai Boy, and he's now at 11 juvenile winners already as One World. Uh, caught the eye on debut with a, a fairly good fourth behind Impact Investor. There has to be scope for improvement from that. You mentioned some first timers. Number eight, Power and the Glory. Good comments coming through from Justin Snaith. And he's the half-brother to the Met winner, double superlative. So lots of pedigree uh, for number eight, Power and the Glory. And any market support must be respected. Uh, number six, Krim, is in the betting. Two-year-old son of Versing Gedericks, who cost 550,000 rand at the national yelling sales last year. And then one other that needs to be considered for trifectas and quartets, of course, uh, number 16, Bagatelle Flash. Not a bad debut. That form has not really stood up. Uh, but having his third run now, number 16, Bagatelle Flash, could get into the back end of trifectas and quartets. But I think a pretty confident first choice is number 14, Kai Boy. Uh, these first timers are going to have to be good to beat him. Yeah, I fully agree there with number 14, Kai Boy. Definitely the horse that uh, I think you can start your all-to-comes all to come, uh, all to comes on the day with. It does look to be hard to uh, beat in race number one. Moving along to race number two and race two will be the start of the bar pot. Place accumulator will start in race three. And now race number two, a juvenile plate over 1,200 metres, 12.55 is the off time. Talk to the master is the favourite here. We'll call it 8 to 10. It's 5 to 1 about number 10, Miss World. El Capitan is at 6 to 1. Decree 12 to 1 into 7 to 1. First timer from the Brett Crawford Yard. And then uh, it is 8 to 1 and better ball. Those now talk to the master. He won uh, quite a nice race uh, last time out. He obviously ran in that very, very strong uh, race behind a uh, little ballerina. I think that was uh, the sales race. And um, then last time out, he duly got the job done. Bernard Fade Herb in the irons once again. And he seems to be a horse that is quite um, forward and, and progressive. And it wouldn't be a surprise if um, he were to notch up back-to-back -back, uh, victories here, Graham. Definitely the one to beat. Number seven, talk to the master. He's my only bipod banker. That's my bet of choice for this meeting. And a banker number seven, talk to the master in the first leg. As you say, his win on Derby Day was fluent. Prior to that, second to little ballerinas come out to win herself since. And five individual straight winners from that form line. It's one of the strongest juvenile form lines so far this season. Number one, El Capitan has got four and a half lengths to find on Talk to the Master. Yes, he's two and a half kilograms better off. Uh, Richard Faree is obviously a significant jockey booking for number one, El Capitan, from the Gareth and Sales stable. Uh, but it's hard to see making up four lengths on Talk to the Master. Uh, Miss World, good winner of a second start and can progress from then. As you've mentioned, a bit of support around for number nine, Decree, uh, the two-year-old son of Gimme the Greenlight making its debut. Uh, bred by the Lammas Growl stud of 
had a fantastic uh, national yelling sale so far, and the Cree could be anything on debut. But again, we have to work with the former number seven, talk to the master, second on debut, second in the sales race, winner on Derby Day. He seems to be the one to beat, and I think he's fairly priced up at around 8 to 10. I think that's a true reflection of his ability to win this race. Paul in here with number seven, talk to the master. Race number three, which is the start of the place accumulator, 1,000 metres the distance. Half past one is the off time for the third race on the card. And your favourite in race three is number seven, Connery from the Glen Cotton Yard. Even money favourite, 11 to 10 you can get. Uh, it's approach shot is at 33 to 10. It's uh, 33 to 10 about Maneki Neko. Rattlesnake is at 8 to 1 and then it's 12 to 1 and better ball those. Now, Connery... He gets the services of uh, Richard Furry once again. Richard was aboard him when he ran uh, behind Star Performer. He's a host that um, last summer I thought he would have got the job done behind uh, Explosive Speed, but he obviously found one too good on the day. But this does look to be his day to uh, to shine, Graham. And uh, I think if he were to get beat, well, then I'm, I'm, I think he'd, he'd probably struggle to win a race. But what's your thoughts on uh, Connery in the third? Look, it's a very, very modest maiden plate over 1,000 metres. I always got the feeling that 1,000 metres was a little on the sharp side for him. He did run second under Richard Furry, as you mentioned, behind Star Performer over 1,000 metres. On the 5th of March, he was quite badly outpaced in the early stages, tried to run on at the end, but Star Performer quite simply too good for him on the day. He is my top choice, uh, but I've covered him in the bipod. I've got pretty wide here in the bipod with three runners. I wouldn't be rushing off to grab the even money Connery. This is his 12th start in the maiden ranks. He has finished second on two occasions and third on three occasions. But he has to be vulnerable. His overall form suggests he is vulnerable. As I said, it's not a strong field, so he could get the job done in this type of race. Uh, but as I mentioned, I wouldn't be rushing off to take the even money about number seven, Connery. Number two approach shot. Uh, if the handicappers have got their sums right, is the best weighted by some distance. Uh, he's finished second in two of his last three starts, and uh, he should be there or thereabouts. He's also got his distinct limitations, but if he were to beat Connery, I wouldn't be surprised. Maneki Neko, more likely race than either approach shot or Connery, uh, possibly better over uh, 1,200 metres, but having said that, he ran second in a work riders uh, race, beaten half length by Prankston, his penultimate start, and uh, again, limitations, this is not a good race, uh, but certainly he's got the overall form to suggest he could win it. The one that could improve is the two-year-old. Now, two-year-olds, when they race in open company in maiden uh, ranks, uh, coming up against uh, well-exposed horses often often do well and uh, for Rattlesnake although his debut effort was rather indifferent fourth as much as 13 and a half lengths behind Lion Rampart he's a two-year-old son of the exciting Buffalo Bill Cody I'm not expecting him to win he is my fourth choice I'm going seven two five and four in this race and including numbers two five and seven in the second leg of the bipod but I wouldn't be surprised in this class of race if Rattlesnake actually improved sufficiently to turn them all over Connery my first choice but I don't see any value at the current odds. It certainly is not uh, value at uh, 11 to 10 about number 7 Connery, but uh, he definitely is the one to beat. Race number 4, Open Maiden, Phillies and Mares, 1,200 metres the distance, 5 past 2 is the off time, and it is Charlene that tops the boards at 3 to 1. 5 to 1 into 4 to 1 about number 7, Rockin' Peony, Richard Free takes a ride once again. 9 to 2 about number 6, Spirit Guide, it's 7 to 1, True Horizon. It's an 8 to 1 and better ball those. Now, uh, number 6 Spirit Guide ran a, a much better race last time out behind First Masterpiece. And that form line has been franked with the winner coming through to win straight out the maiden. So, now that she's back up to 1,200 meters, she could obviously uh, be, uh, be ready to uh, put her best foot forward once again and uh, perhaps run a huge race. And at 9 to 2, I'm going to make her the top selection for me, but... It's obviously a maiden handicap where you've got uh, horses at the bottom of the weights that uh, could make their presence felt in a big way. Yeah, Rahil, they've thrown us uh, three open maidens on this card, races four, five and six. So the opening three legs of the pick six are all open maidens and we know from history books uh, that these races can turn up some surprising results I have utmost respect for number six Spirit Guide. I like the way that uh, she stayed on 
over 1100 meters behind first masterpiece last time out that came out to win first up out the maidens and the 1200 meters as you mentioned uh, should be much better for number six spirit guide even further perhaps uh, so spirit guide certainly goes into my play my second choice your first choice but we both have healthy respect for number six spirit guide obviously goes in to the third leg of the bipod and clearly one for the pick six permutations i'm going to stick with number 11 charlene uh, she's been very consistent she's uh, seldom runs a bad race the brett crawford stable in very good form uh, she should be there and thereabouts, but again, uh, they're betting it quite wide. She's top of the boards at three to one. I think she stands a favourite's chance, uh, but uh, again, she might have to be satisfied with a minor placing. Uh, my third choice would be Richard Faris Mount, number seven, Rocking Peony. Carries only 54 and a half for the half a kilogram over that Richard Faris going to put up. Uh, so receives a bit of weight from Charlene, and that brings the three-year-old daughter of Captain of All into the race. But the reality is she's had nine starts, and in nine starts, starts one fourth placing but we saw in one of these sort of contests not long ago that lady loxton came into an open maiden without having ever run a place and, and duly arrived so these open maidens can throw up funny results and rocking peony the fact that richard Ferry has decided to stick with her poor greg Enyon has got to go into the play and then uh, another worth a mention is number 10 true horizon uh, was well beaten in that moderate lady loxton race but her run prior to that went third to strata uh, off a low weight in an open maiden brings it into this race with a chance. He's just got 52 and a half on her back for the services of An Anthony Andrews. He puts up a kilo. So True Horizon has also got to be factored into the play, particularly uh, from a pick six point of view. I've just gone with numbers six, seven, and 11 in the uh, third leg of the bipod. 11 being my top choice, that Charlene Spirit Guide being my second choice, and uh, Rocking Peony being my third choice. My fourth choice would be number 10, True Horizon. But you've also got to expect some improvement from number eight, Future Star. Uh, because she doesn't have an official rating, she's only had the two starts. She does have 60 kilograms to carry, uh, but she's got plenty of scope for improvement. So don't leave number eight future star out of your pick six players. I said the first three legs of the pick six are all open maidens, and uh, they can throw up funny results. So it's very, very difficult to nail your colours to the mast. We've been waiting for Jet Green to show some improvement. Also only has 52 and a half to shoulder. And would I be surprised if Jet Green suddenly arrived? Lunga Gila has now found the winner's enclosure. It's Horses aren't running too badly, and if there's a lurker in the pack, it's going to be number 14, Jet Green. But I'm going with number 11, Charlene, to beat number 6, Spirit Guide. If it were to finish up the other way around, um, I wouldn't be surprised, and I have healthy respect for the fact that you prefer the chances of Spirit Guide. Race number 5, 1440, is the off time. It's an open maiden over 1,200 metres, and uh, your favourite is number 5, Einstein, at 2-1. to one. Number 10, Cosmic Rhythm is at 5 to 2. Both horses have found a bit of betting support. Einstein 22 to 10 into 2 to 1. And Cosmic Rhythm, Rhythm 28 to 10 into 5 to 2. 2020 Vision at 9 to 2. Stars in Heaven is at 8 to 1. And then it's 14 to 1. And better about those. Now, uh, Einstein here and a third behind star performer. So we'll uh, have to wait and see how Connery does go in uh, one of the earlier races. And then you've got this horse, uh, Cosmic Rhythm, who has shown uh, some form but his uh, his form has been uh, best over further so it's interesting that they are bringing him back in trip to 1200 meters a distance that he's only had one start over and that was on debut and uh, the bookmakers uh, have priced his horse up uh, at uh, at the top of betting boards that's obviously uh, the fact that that richard is aboard him and uh, w what do you make of, of race number five graham well, let's kick off with number 10, Cosmic Rhythm, because I don't quite know what to make of the three-year-old son of Canford Cliffs. He's been placed over 2,000 metres when he was third beaten four lengths by Marshall Field back in December. He was gelded. Uh, he made his first appearance as a gelding last time out in fourth behind Hoodie, and that was a, a better effort. Now, it's interesting that I was listening to a show, a podcast of Darren Burroughs. He makes this horse very difficult to beat Cosmic Rhythm. He likes the fact that he's dropping back to 1,200 metres. For me, I really don't know what to make of him. He's no stranger to Richard Ferry. Richard Ferry has partnered him three times earlier on in his career. 
so I'm going to sit on the fence with number 10, Cosmic Rhythm. I haven't included him in my bipod play. Uh, Richard Free, as you say, is a significant booking. He might have improved as a gelding. It wasn't a bad run by Hoodia, behind Hoodia, although Hoodia didn't rank that form in any shape or form. So obvious respect for number 10, Cosmic Rhythm. But quite frankly, I don't know what to expect over this trip. I'm really keen on seeing how number 4, 2020 Vision goes. He's having his first run as a gelding. I think he brings the best form into the race. Uh, he's second to Raf's Rocket, he's third to Plaza Record, and even his sixth last on out by Night Bomber. The Night Bomber is a useful handicapper. And if you go back in 2020 Vision's form line, he ran fourth to Underworld, who's now a feature race winner. So I do think that number four, 2020 Vision, who's quite easy to back in the early markets, um, is the, is the one they might have to fear most. He's the one that interests me most. He's having his first start as a gelding. My second choice would be number five, Einstein. Uh, the form is there for all to see. He's improved in his last two outings, and there's no reason. He's fairly lightly raced. There's no reason why he shouldn't continue to improve. I've chucked a real rough end to the bipod. I've gone with numbers uh, two, four, and five. Uh, I've thrown in number two, Miss Lemonade, because of these open maidens, and with just 52 and a half on the back. She's a rank outsider in the field, uh, but I wouldn't be surprised to see her in the mix. Her best run was behind Vix Princess. Admittedly, that was at Hollywood Bets, Durbanville. But but he wasn't entirely disgraced last time out behind explosive speech. He showed for a long way. And uh, she can step up from that. She's, after all, a daughter of Versi Gederick. So I'm going with numbers four, five, and two that in order of preference in this leg of the bipod. But clearly, you can't leave number 10, Cosmic Rhythm, out of the play as far as the uh, pick sixes and jackpots are concerned. And another to perhaps even consider is number seven, Stars in Heaven. It's an open maiden. It is what it is. Uh, but I'm looking for a lot of improvement as a gelding now from number four, 2020 Vision, and uh, he gets my vote. Yeah, I don't like the look of this race. It, um, it just seems like a race where you could get an upset, and I think Graham has found us some nice value there with number two, Miss Lemonade, at 20 to 1 in the market. Daughter of Versen Getrix, she could pop up if put in her best foot forward in race number five with just 52 and a half kgs on the back. Race number six, another open maiden, 1600 meters the trip. Quarter past three is the off time. Your favourite is number 11, St. Bridget at 28 to 10. Green Isle at 7 to 2 along with Sansa Stark. It's 11 to 2 about Blind Faith. National uh, Disgrace at 11 to 2. And then it's 7 to 1 about La Pequenita, 16 to 1. And better ball those. Now, uh, Green Isle sh ran a very nice race last time out behind Plum Pudding, who's uh, come through straight out the maidens to Frank that form. Gate 1, 1600 metres. A distance that um, suits her quite nicely. And... Uh, She's a filly that seems to be uh, seems to have learnt what it's all about now, and uh, she looks ready to uh, to win a race. And then number eleven, Saint Bridget, who ran second behind Plum put in last time out, so they come from the same form line. But uh, she's obviously got that uh, that wide draw to contend with. So preference preference for me would be with number one, uh, Green Isle, just based on the draws. I think you're probably right. Number one, Green R jumping out of Barrier Gate 1 as opposed to St. Bridget jumping out of Barrier Gate 11 could mean that you'll turn that form around. There's only uh, uh, three parts of a length between them, one Green Isle and 11 St. Bridget. Uh, they've all got to go into the play. Uh, my top choice is number three, Sansa Stark, uh, but this is a very evenly matched field, so not with a great deal of confidence. Also nicely drawn in Gate 3, last time out second to Lickety Split in a similar sort of race. Over 1,800 metres, she steps back in trip, uh, but she has once before run second to Pineapple Mint Green, a run behind uh, Passchendaele wasn't too bad. So there are, there are elements of her form lines which suggest she can win a race like this, and she gets the services of Richard Faree. <laughs> Uh, number a couple others worth of mention blind faith pops up now and again la pequenita national disgrace could improve she was uh, behind both uh, green isle and saint bridget in the plum pudding form line and plum pudding of course came out to frank her own form line so that could be the right form line to follow numbers one green isle 10 national disgrace and 11 saint bridget uh, but my top choice is going to be number three sansa stark but again not much to choose between them in this open maiden and numbers one three ten and eleven have all got to go into your, your pick six and jackpot calculations. That's race number six. Moving along to race number seven, which is the Champagne Stakes, a grade three over 1,200 meters. This is uh, the feature race on the day, and uh, this is definitely the race that um, I'm sure many punters will be looking uh, forward to seeing uh, 
get underway. And uh, race seven, your favorite is October Morn at seven to two. It's uh, eleven to two about Countdown, Dance Variety, Winter Cloud, seven to one Rio Carrari, eight to one about Questionian, and then it's ten to one and better bar those. Now uh, this filly October Morn, she's obviously uh, a horse that uh, s seems to have a lot of ability, but. Um, Aldo de Mayer, not riding. Yeah, that's interesting. The jockey declaration. Grant Fenica got bored uh, October morn. She's a three-year-old daughter of Trippy, and she loves the course and distance. She's won twice from three starts over the track and trip. She's entitled to be at the top of the boards. She never runs a bad race. She never run, she's never been out of the top four. She's had 10 starts for four wins, three seconds and three fourths. So she doesn't know what it is to run a bad race. And she was a good second in the Prix du Cap behind runaway winner, Double Grand Slam. And of course, Double Grand Slam came out and franked that form in no uncertain terms on her debut in KwaZulu Natal. But Rafael, call me, uh, call me sentimental if you like. I'm rowing in with number two, Rio Carrari. Uh, I love the fact that he's back up to 1,200 meters. His last two starts over 1,000 and 1,100 meters. Uh, that's a little on the sharp side for him these days. I know he's seven years old, rising eight, but uh, he's still very game. He's still very consistent. He's slowly but surely getting the better of the others in terms of the weight structure. And although he's got 61 kilograms to shoulder, the last time he ran over 1,200 metres was three runs back in the diadem. He was only beaten a length and a quarter by Thunderstruck. I think if he repeats that sort of form, then Rio Carrari is going to give us a very good each-way run for our money. He's quite easy to back. Bernard Fay Derb takes the ride on Rio Carrari for the first time ever, which is interesting. And uh, I'm expecting a big run from number two, Rio Carrari. So he is my top choice ahead of number seven, October Morn. The very consistent dance variety would be my third choice. He won for us last time out when we were on him and we, he was heavily backed into odds on from bigger prices initially so i'm expecting another good run from him number 11 winter cloud at the weight should run another very good race she beat dance variety last time three parts of a length so much to choose between them countdown went to port elizabeth to win there and he's very he's very effective over this track and trip so it's a deep race as the betting suggests it's pretty open it's an interesting renewal of the uh, champagne stakes uh, but i'm going to be in the camp of rio carrari and i'm really hoping i'd be thrilled to see him get another graded states victory under the belt i'll tell you what last time out uh, when rio carrari moved up going through the 300 i thought oh no here we go he's coming to spoil the party with the, to beat number uh, to beat dance variety but i think the weight just told over the final stages of the race he comes into the race, um, what's it, three cages bet off with Dance Variety, and um, I think that Graham could be right. I think he'll turn the form around with Dance Variety of this 1,200-meter trip, and at 7-1, to one, he certainly offers terrific value. But um, lots of horses in with winning chances here. Winter Cloud, you can never discount her chances. She won a good race last time out when she beat Dance Variety. Whether she can uh, confirm that form on these weight terms, only the race will tell, but she's clearly a filly that's got a lot of ability and then number seven, October morn. Moving along to race number eight. This is a middle stakes over the 1,000 meter trip. 25 past four is the off time. And number nine, the abdicator is your favorite at 18 to 10. Icy Blast at seven to two. Tough Terrain at nine to two. Five to one about Poroshka. And then it's six to one and better bar of those. Now, it's a race where we um, are bound to get... Um, a decent pace and you've got uh, this horse the abdicator who, who just runs his best races uh, from the front and uh, last time out they tried something different with him they sort of gave him a chance and let him uh, follow one or two uh, into the race and it's it seemed to work because he won uh, quite a nice race beating Poroshka Richard Furry gets a, a good tune out of the son of no nay never and um, his course and distance form is very very good but um, this was tough terrain. There was some uh, shoot outside support for him uh, last time out behind um, Dance Variety. And that was uh, in, a, in a far stronger race than what he does meet here. And I think he could, uh, he could be a horse that uh, could possibly beat the Abdicator. We saw him get the job done beating the Abdicator in his penultimate start. And uh, at the weights, there shouldn't be much to choose between them. They, they should finish in that order once again. And at 9-2, to two, he could probably offer some nice value as opposed to 18-10 to 10 about number 9. Yes, he could. And 
clearly the form suggests he's in there with a big chance. Uh, as you mentioned in his penultimate start, he narrowly beat the abdicator in receipt of three kilograms of meat on exactly the same terms. The abdicator has come out to win since. I think the abdicator got into a little bit of trouble. He wasn't that well away on that occasion. In fact, he was uh, towards the rear of the field in the early stages of the race. He moved through as if he was going to win, and then he just uh, got nabbed by tough terrain in the closing stages. So whereas I agree with you, there is probably better value with tough terrain somewhere you've got to take a stand and uh, with races four five and six being open maidens the champagne stakes being competitive and i think the ninth race the last leg of the pick six being even more difficult somewhere you've got to take a chance and i'm going to row in with number nine the abdicator is my suggested exotic bet banker for the day uh, is he vulnerable can he get beat yes the form book says it all tough terrain could beat him Peroshka is a kilo and a half better off for a length, but I like the fact that the abdicator can either go forward or sit in just behind the pace. Richard Faree seems to have improved his racing manners. Richard Faree is unbeaten on the abdicator, has ridden him twice for two victories, stays with the abdicator, and I do think the abdicator's still got some upside. So I think they're sorting him out. They're getting to grips with the abdicator, and I'm expecting him, even though they meet on the same terms, I'm expecting him to turn the tables on tough terrain. So my suggested exotic bet banker for the day, uh, when it comes to the jackpots and the pick sixes, is certainly number nine, the abdicator in the eighth race as middle stakes. Uh, but that doesn't mean to say that Icy Blast, Peroshka, Nordic Chief, and tough terrain are entirely chanceless. Uh, they all need to be respected. Peroshka, tough terrain are my two choices to follow the abdicator home with Icy Blast to round out the quartet. But the abdicator's going to be my play of the day as far as the banker bet is concerned. I'll be holding my breath, uh, but I think he'll get the job done. Quite a bit of confidence coming through from Graham there regarding number nine. The abdicator is uh, strongly in his camp and he's hoping that he can notch up Kiryu in number five. Race number nine, this is the final leg of the place accumulator and the pick six, 1600 meters the distance. Five o'clock is the off time. It's a class four contest. And Fly Futura, along with number nine, Le Legionnaire, both your favorites, weak favorites at four to one. It's uh, six to one about uh, Karyaku. It's six to one about Big Unit. Seven to one, Unicorn Alert. 15 to two, Moon Acres. Eight to one, All About Ronnie. And then it's 14 to one. And bets of all those. You mentioned the final leg of the pick six is very trappy. And um, is, it a, is it a race where you'd recommend uh, the punters uh, row in with the field here? Well, if you could afford the field, uh, yes, that would be my suggestion. Perhaps there are one or two that you can throw out, but uh, this for me is the most difficult race on the card, this class four handicap over 1,600 metres. I'm not going to be of much help. There are too many in with winning chances. Fly for Tura can win it. Kariaku could win it. Fair advantage could surprise. Moon Acres, recent maiden winner, I really don't fancy him, but uh, would I be surprised? No, not at all. Shavut has got uh, decent ability, hasn't been seen so, since November, so he might need the run. Le Legionnaire, Unicorn Alert, Big Unit, all about Ronnie. They all come into the race with winning chances. The betting suggests it's a very open race. They're betting very wide. My hesitant top choice would be number 11, Big Unit, despite the poor draw uh, ahead of number 12 all about Ronnie who's drawn even wider um, but they're not necessarily always consistent so as I've mentioned Le Legionnaire Unicorn Alert uh, Karyaku and Fly Futura so if I was to narrow this down my short list for the exotics if you can't uh, go the field and you want to narrow it down then I would certainly include all of numbers 2 Fly Futura 3 Karyaku 9 Le Legionnaire 10 Unicorn Alert 11 big unit and 12 all about Ronnie. It's going to be about a bit of luck in running. The draw could play a role. The pace could play a role. Can there be an, ups an upset from one of those that I haven't just mentioned on my short list? Yes, it can be. So if you can afford to go the field or if you're happy to take a lesser percentage than go the field, we had a carryover again at Hollywood. There's Kenilworth in the pick six last week. And uh, if the abdicator does us proud, then uh, you really want them all in the last leg. It's a trappy, trappy race. I can't be of much help. It certainly is a race where um, you've got lots of horses in with chances and it could be a nice race for you to get involved in a quartet, especially if you like a couple of horses uh, that you think can win. Well, then uh, those are the horses for first and then for second, third and fourth, you can find some uh, nice lurkers to include into the mix and perhaps a quartet could just be um, your bet in race number nine and the, the way you make a, a bit of cash.
Race number 10, this is the final race on the day, 17.35 is the off time. It's a class 5 over 1400 meters and your favorite is number 8, World of Pleasure. Two-year-old uh, Colt taking on older company, he's at 16 to 10. Like the Clappers is at 4 to 1, it's 9 to 2 about Cabana Lacedi, 5 to 1, Hang Out the Stars, Kelp Forest and then it's 12 to 1. And better bar those. There's been long shot support for number one, Morning Chess, 40 to 1 into 20 to 1. But he's definitely going to need to improve on his form, especially with 62 kgs on the back. Let's start with number eight, the World of Pleasure, Graham, because he's, um, he's a two year old son of uh, One World. And um, last time out, he, he won a nice race over 1400 meters, beating Buzz Bomb, who looks to be a serious chance on Sunday out at Hollywood Bets Gravel. And uh, He's a horse that can obviously only improve and uh, the handicap has given him a mark of 90, which, uh, wh what do you make of that firstly? Yeah, look, there's no doubt that number eight world of pleasure is the best horse in the race and the one with the brightest future. Uh, he's a two-year-old, he's had the three starts, he won over the distance uh, last time out emphatically. Uh, He's clearly a nice sort, he's by one world, but he's a two-year-old being set to carry 60 from a widish draw in in a reasonably small field. He's drawn eight out of 10. It doesn't make his job any easier. He went forward when winning his maiden last time out, and he'll probably want to go up handy again, but I'm gonna take him on. Uh, I'm old-fashioned, uh, two-year-olds in handicap, top weight, wide draw. Uh, I'm gonna play against him. I'm, not going to leave him out entirely, but I'm certainly not going to put all my eggs into the world of pleasure basket. Uh, my top choice would be the frustrating to follow number two, like the Clappers. He receives a kilo and a half from world of pleasure. He's a hard knocking five year old. He likes the course and distance. And I just think uh, with the more experience and the, a more toughened warrior, I think that uh, he can turn over world of pleasure. I'm going to go with my th uh, second choice as being Kelp Forest. I think he's always there and thereabouts. My third choice would be Kevin Lissetti. And, and then World of Pleasure to round out the top four. Having said all of that, I'm playing against the favorite number eight World of Pleasure. But he might be that good and, and heading that much in the right direction that he could account. After all, this is a class five handicap. He's not coming up against superstars, but he is coming up against hard knocking handicappers uh, who um, are receiving weight. Uh, from him uh, in some instances uh, and certainly in the case of number two like the clappers so I'm looking to beat number eight world of pleasure in the last leg of jackpot two a reminder that it is a 10 race card so jackpot two kicks off with race seven I'm going to bank the abdicator there again and, and play to beat number eight world of pleasure I could end up with egg on my face I'm going to run that risk I'm going with like the clappers, the more hard knocking type of horse to finally register another career victory. Well, his form has certainly been franked uh, like the clappers because you've got uh, Radicho did come through to frank his own form and Master of Paris who uh, came through to win from the form line as well. So that piece of form is looking uh, quite bright for number two, like the clappers. And he could just be the horse to take on number eight to World of Pleasure with you. But uh, perhaps those two horses could fight it out in race number 10. We're going to move along to, th to the suggested bet now. And Graham will take us through his um, his uh, suggested bet, which is a bipod. And uh, the bipod will commence with the running of uh, race number two. And that um, will get underway at five to one. So, Graham, take it away. Thank you, Rahil. As you mentioned, first leg of the bipod, 12.55. It's a juvenile plate. We're bankering number seven, talk to the master. I think some of the better bets come early in the card, certainly in the first race, Kai Boy. In the second race, talk to the master. Those two uh, look to uh, win their races and get punches off to a good start, but it certainly gets trickier after that. Second leg, I'm going numbers two, approach shot, five, Maneki Neko, and seven, Connery. Connery, the top choice, but no value. Uh, the third leg is an open maiden, Phillies and 1200 meters going six spirit guide seven rocking peony and 11 charlene and then the next leg in open maiden over 1200 meters again i state i'm not quite sure what to make of number 10 cosmic rhythm i haven't included cosmic rhythm but if you want to throw him in i wouldn't put you off that i've included one big outsider number two miss lemonade along with numbers four 2020 vision and number five einstein the penultimate leg, I'm going with numbers three, Sansa Stark, and 11, St. Bridget, to narrow the perm down. If you're going to add one more than your top choice, Rahil, number one, Green Isle, would be next in line. And the last leg, my top choice is Rio Carrari, but I've backed him up with numbers seven, October Morn, and eight, Dance Variety, and an interesting renewal of the Champagne Stakes. That's my bypot. 
But Abdicator is uh, my exotic bet banker play for the day. That is Graham's bar pod, which uh, will uh, commence with the running of race number two. Graham, thanks very much for your time. Enjoy the final uh, day of the sales and uh, have a wonderful weekend. Thank you, Real. Go well. Thanks to Graham. All the best with racing out at Hollywood Best Kenilworth on Saturday. Ten races on the program and hopefully it treats you well.